The selection brush tool in Affinity Photo is pretty smart, but sometimes you need to give it a little extra guidance to get exactly what you want. Today we'll look at how to use the refine tool to get even more control over your selections. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be talking about using the selection brush tool, which is this option over here. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about how to use the refine option with it as well, which is this button up here. So I've started off with a pretty simple example here just to show you some of the basic selection brush tool features. It's just two pixel layers in the shape of a rectangle. So you have a red one on top and a blue one on bottom. So I'll select my brush tool here, the selection brush tool. And what you notice immediately is that you can kind of start selecting areas. Now the two key modes to this tool are adding to your selection and removing from your selection. So by default, I will be adding to my selection here. But if I hold Alt, I can actually start taking away from the selection. So this is really kind of a key part of the workflow, this back and forth between adding and subtracting from your selections. And you can also see the buttons up here, which will do it automatically if you don't wanna hold the keys while you do it. So if I click Subtract, it'll start taking away. And if I click Add, it'll start adding. So I'm gonna hit Control D and just undo this selection here. Now let's start looking at some of the basic options for this selection tool up here before we get into the refine parts. First, we have this snap to edges. Now you may wonder what the edge is. Well, it refers to the edge of your objects in your shape. So right now I have snap to edges turned on. If I click inside my shape, you can see it's jumping straight to the edges. So this isn't the edges of your document, it's the edges of these shapes within your document. So you can see here, it's kind of snapping to the edge of the red, jumping to the blue, and if you go really hard over an edge, it'll go into that shape also. So I can select into my red here and it's selected. If I have snap to edges turned off, well, this is what I had in the introduction. It's just not gonna go to the edge there. You know, sometimes this is what you want. Sometimes it's not, depends. Next we have all layers. And what this is gonna do is it's going to make decisions based on all the graphics in your layer. So I have it turned on right now. And that is why you can see it jumping to this division between the blue and red square. You can see they're on different layers and the selection brush tool is considering the context of all the layers. So now if I turn off all layers, I'll go to the blue layer here and watch how it's just selecting as if the red layer wasn't even there. Just to clarify, if I hide the red layer, you can see this is the blue layer behind it. So when I'm on the blue layer here, the red layer isn't even being taken into consideration. But if I do all layers, now it will actually do it. Now let's look at the soft edges option. So I turned off snap to edges just to make a shape that's kind of irregular here. Let me show what happens. I'll just select an area and I have soft edges enabled. Now if I select my paintbrush, I'm going to use a hard brush here, but watch what happens because I had soft edges selected. If I go and I paint in my area, if I unselect it, when I zoom in, you can see the edges are very soft here, like that. So let's do one without soft edges. I'll turn off soft edges. Now I'll paint in here. I'll undo it. So you can see without soft edges down here, I get a much more ragged edge on my shape. Okay, let's look at something a little more realistic now, which is selecting a person out of a portrait. So I'll go and I'll select my selection brush tool here. And the bracket keys, you can make your brush bigger and smaller. Let's make sure I have the correct options here. I want snap to edges, all layers is good, soft edges. So you can just click in your subject and it will generally do a pretty good job initially of selecting what you want. It doesn't have to be exact because we'll look at how to improve this later. So this is my basic selection. And if there were parts I wanted to take out, I could hold Alt and take out a piece around there. And if I wanted to put it back in, I could just re-click on it and add to it again. Now, before we look at the refine tool, I want to show you a feature that's also really useful in this scenario, which is the quick mask option up here. So I'm going to click on this. And what this does is it quickly shows you an example of what you have selected. The red area represents the part that we don't have selected. And if you don't like red, you can toggle it to view it in a different way. We can make it black, we can make it white, or we can make it transparent. Let's go to black because I think that one kind of differentiates it the best. And if I were to unselect parts of it, we would see that the black would represent what I don't have selected anymore. And as I go and I select back into it, the black will be filled in there. Now it's important to remember about this feature is that it's purely just a visualization tool. It's not actually having any effect on our image. It's just showing our selection in a different way. And that can be definitely useful in these situations where sometimes the background and the foreground, they're a little ambiguous. So this visualization tool can help with that. If you want to disable it, you just click on it again. So now that I have this selection made, let's click on the refine tool. And by the way, this will work with any selection if you did it with the square tool or the freehand selection tool. I'm just using it with the selection brush tool here, but it'll work with any selection tool. So let's finally click on this button here. 
And then we get this tool here. So it looks similar to what we just looked at, where you have this red background showing what's not selected. Just like the quick mask tool, this tool also lets us change the visualization. So we can say black matte, we can say white matte. I'll go back to overlay. Now what this tool helps us do is fine tune our selection. But there's something that's really important to understand, which is that when you run this tool, by default, it already makes a slight improvement to your selection. So if you like what you see and you don't wanna make any more changes, you should click apply, not cancel. Let me show you what that means. Let's zoom in over here. If I click cancel, let's click refine again. You can see it jumped a little bit, and that was because it was thinking when we clicked the refine button, it was actually trying to make an improvement. I'll do it one more time. Watch around the ear here. Watch what it initially looks like, and then watch what happens after a second or two. You can see it improved it a little bit. So let's zoom out. Now, what do all these options mean? Well, there's a couple different things that are useful to know. Foreground means the selected area. So what if you have selected already? That's what Affinity Photo means by foreground. Conversely, background is the part that isn't selected already. And matte basically means the edges of your selection. So let's take it from the top here. Border width, let's toggle this and see what happens. You can see a preview of what it considers the border. And when you ran this tool, this refine tool, this is the part that it looked at the most, this 10% range between our foreground and our background. The smooth option is just going to determine how sharp our corners can be. So let's find a good example of a corner here. So here we have a bit of a corner. If I turn on the smooth higher, that's probably be less sharp there. So you can see it kind of smooths it out a bit. So depending on your image, you may want the curves to be more or less smooth. I'll put it back down to zero. Feather is going to determine how soft the edges of your selection are. So again, we can see this edge here. If I feather it a lot, you'll see it's kind of this light pink area. That means it's kind of semi-transparent, semi-selected there. I'll move it back down. Ramp is kind of similar to feather, but it's a little bit more about how suddenly that transition is made. So let's make a really sudden ramp. You can kind of see how sharp that is here. So this is with a high ramp. Let's go the other way. And this is with a low ramp into the selection. Usually I leave this at 0%. I don't do too much with that. Now you may notice I have a brush icon here and I can actually select the areas that I want Affinity to look closer at. So right now it's set to matte. I want it to look closer at the hair. So let me drag this cursor over here on the hair. I'm just clicking and dragging and then I'll let go. And you can see that Affinity Photo took a closer look at the hair and made a better selection. So I can do that over here too. I like that. How about over here? I'll do some more over here. So when you select matte, you want to select these edges between your foreground and your background. If you actually want to add specifically to the foreground, you would select the foreground tool. Let's say I want to go out here. I'm adding more to my foreground. So you can see it selected it. But I don't like that, so I'm going to undo it. Control Z. Similarly with background, the opposite happens. I can cut into my selection. And it brings the background in more. So let's assume we're happy with our selection. We can choose how we want the output to be represented. So when you select the output, we can make the output be a selection. We can make the output be a mask, a new layer, or a new layer with a mask. I'm going to choose new layer with a mask because this one does something interesting that I want to show you. So let's click apply. And I'll hide the original photo. And now up here, I have the new pixel layer with the mask that cuts out my shape the way I want it to based on the refine tool. But this also does something else that's kind of interesting. Let me turn off the mask. And you can see, as you expect, it looks like our original photo. But if you look kind of closely, there's some other stuff going on here, like around the hair and up here and over here. Let me put the other image over it so you can see the difference. So this is our original image. And this is the image with the mask. So is this like some type of bug in Affinity Photo? Actually, it's not a bug. It's something very clever called color decontamination. Let's go back to our original image for a second. What Affinity Photo is trying to help us with is the way that edges can kind of have color bleeds into them. So let's look at some of the hair over here. You can see the hair is blonde, but there's kind of blue bleeding into it. Let's go back to the selection with the mask. You can see that a lot of that blue was removed. Now, the way that blue was removed is that Affinity, in the image itself, it added in this extra blonde color to the edges. So that way, when we apply the mask, it cancels out the blue. So that's a really cool effect. And that's one of the reasons why for the output of the refine tool, I often like the selection with a mask because it does that color correction effect. And by the way, one other tip I like to do when making a mask is I like to put some type of solid color behind it to see what it really looks like. We could do this with the black and white like we did before, but let's try it with like solid green and let's see what happens. So I'll fill this in. 
it's a solid green. And we can zoom in. And a lot of times colors like this will show you other problems. But this one actually looks really good. Actually, right here we have a problem. So this green is not supposed to be there. So what I can do is I can go back to my mask. I can select the paintbrush. I'll make sure the color, I'll make sure it's a solid brush. And I can paint this back in. I can also see over here, this green is showing through. That green shouldn't be there. So I'm painting on my mask and I'm putting this edge back in. Everything else looks good enough for me. Actually over here, you know, maybe we want to say this is more hair here. We could decide how we want to do this over here. So I think experimenting with solid color backgrounds really gives you a good way of seeing little flaws in the mask that you wouldn't otherwise see. If you have any questions about the refine tool, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.